You are listening to The Little Psychic Podcast with June Mack, which was formerly known as The Fully Woo Podcast. I hope you enjoy. Hi there, I'm your host, June Mack, and you're listening to The Fully Woo Podcast. I'll be talking about all the fun woo-woo things in a down-to-earth, bright, light-hearted, and easy-to-navigate way. Hopefully, I'll be able to help you ignite and light the way on your own spiritual journey and evolution too. Welcome to episode six of the Fully Woo podcast. In today's episode, it does get a little bit emotional and a little bit personal as I share uh, my story about my relationship with my dad. So I share a little bit about our relationship before he passed over and how our relationship has continued to grow after he has passed over. I hope that even though it's a little bit sad to talk about, that this episode can bring anyone who has ever lost somebody who's close to their hearts, uh, some comfort and to let you know that the connection uh, with your loved ones can continue to evolve and grow. I hope that I have done my dad some justice in this episode and thank you so much for listening. Today's episode is brought to you by Guided. My five-week live group program, which is a deep dive into working with and connecting with your spirit guides, and also learning how to receive from them intuitive insight. We start on June 7th. It's suitable for beginners, and you can find out more via junemac.com forward slash programs. Hello, and welcome to episode six of the Fully Woo podcast, your modern day spirituality podcast. I'm your host, June Mack, intuitive, psychic, energy healer, taking the complications out of connecting with your spirituality and trying to explain things in a down to earth and easy to understand way. Um, In today's episode, I'm taking it down a notch and getting quite personal. So I don't know how I'm going to go today with this one. I might have to keep stopping and having a little bit of a teary, but (laughs) know that I'll be okay. Um, The reason why is because I'm talking about my dad today and my dad passed away uh, this year in January. So early January 22. So at this point of the recording, it's been, or well, it will be coming up to about five months since he passed. So it's still really fresh. And my dad is someone that meant the absolute world to me. Um, why am I talking about this then? <laughs> if I know it's going to be a bit of a Debbie Downer um, episode, which it won't really. I hope you know what the reason why I'm doing it is to help to bring other people comfort who have lost somebody because Unfortunately, in life, it is something that we are all going to have to um, deal with. Um, Also, being soul-led or spirit-led when it comes to my podcast episode. So what I mean by that is that I don't have them planned out. I know that a lot of people plan out their podcast episodes, what they're going to talk about each week. They might have some type of plan in place which is awesome and super, super organized. But for me, I kind of just trust that spirit is going to bring up what's important to talk about that particular week and just go with my intuition. So for this episode, this literally dropped in probably just at the end of last week. And um, I felt it was important for other people to hear how their relationships can continue to grow with um, loved ones, that have passed over. And also maybe it was for my own healing as well. Maybe I needed to talk about this for myself. Who knows? I just trust spirit. I'm going with it. Um, so as a medium, I can connect with the passed over. My relationship with mediumship is complicated. (laughs) I am a medium, which means that I can communicate with those that have passed over, but I would say I am a developing medium or a medium in development, uh, which means that it's something that I'm still working on. So I would not advertise that this is something that I do. 
Um, but occasionally, you know, if they pop through in a reading and they're very persistent, I will obviously pass on whatever it is that is to come through, but it's something that I definitely want to get a lot better at. Um, I put an immense amount of pressure on myself when it comes to mediumship because for me, I just like this person or this passed over person, this spirit, I want to do them justice and I want my accuracy to be even better because what it's like for mediumship is, I mean, it's like this with psychic readings too, is that basically you're playing charades with your spirit guides or with this spirit and trying to interpret what it is that they are trying to say and I haven't got all my mediumship um, I guess, symbols and things completely sorted yet. So I just want to get better at it. Anyway, that is a whole another another story. But I wanted to share um, my experiences because I do feel like it's really important for anyone out there to know, because unfortunately it's something we all have to go through grief, that even though I have I have had experiences communicating with the other side, doesn't mean that, you know, you can't as well. You can't connect to with a spirit that has passed over. Any, If you are open to it and it's something that you believe in, that they continue to go on or the essence of us continues to go on, you can connect to. And I hope that this brings some comfort to anyone who has lost anybody to know that your loved one in spirit is okay. It's probably one of the number one things that people ask when they want to, when they're asking about loved ones that have passed over, are they okay? I can tell you now, every spirit that I have connected to is 100% happy and at peace and okay and know that they are still always with you, no matter it, what it is that you are doing and where you are, they are always with you. In fact, one of the most common messages I get from past over loved ones is that they have the best of both worlds where they are. So they can simultaneously be in heaven, be at peace, be with the divine, be completely warm and feeling amazing but also be with you at the same time. So they can keep an eye over you and know exactly what it is that you're doing without judgment. They don't have, they're not judging at this point anymore. So I don't want you to get all weird about it. Um, and they can experience all these amazing family events. They know everything that is going on that's been occurring and they literally have the best of both worlds. So that is an important message that comes through in a lot of my readings. If, you know, passed over spirit drop in. Um, and you know, I'm a mediumship in development, so I do a lot of practice readings and this is something that comes through all the time. When they pass over, as far as my understanding, they are instantly light and free from all of their human physical ailments or sicknesses. And I, I feel they even continue to learn and better evolve, you know, as a spirit, even after they've passed um, they continue to understand and get better and know what their faults were when they were here as a human. There's even lots of spirits who I have communicated with who weren't the best people when they were here, you know, in the physical earthly realm. And now that they are in spirit, they completely understand their mistakes and a lot of the time are very apologetic as to whether they were quite stern or stubborn or strict in their beliefs. Um, sometimes there are people who are like, nope, don't want to hear from them because, you know, they were a jerk. But a lot of the time, if you were open to what it is that they have to say, it's usually an apology for being a jerk or for understanding um, that an understanding that they were very closed-minded possibly, you know, as a human. So a lot of the time there are messages like that that want to come through as well. So getting to the part about my dad and our story for anyone who might find it interesting or find that there's bits that they might find healing. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say if you hear me get emotional, know that I'm okay. It's okay. I actually think it's okay to cry or get upset if you're grieving. In fact, I think it's really important for you to do that. I have dealt with a lot of clients that don't deal with their feelings when they come up and they continue to push them down 
and to not feel them at the time. And when this happens, it's like, I almost see it clairvoyantly like a, say it starts out like a little seed pushed down into your energy field that you haven't dealt with it. Each time you don't deal with it and you continue to push it down, it's like another layer goes on top then another layer goes on top. And then before you know it, it's like this big ball there that is either going to come out in the wrong way. So you might just snap all of a sudden and have this big angry or emotional outburst um, and it'll come out at a time when you least expected it when it's not convenient. <laughs> Or unfortunately, sometimes I see, um, you know, grief that hasn't been dealt with um, materialize in a physical way in terms of anxiety um, or depression later on. And, you know, obviously I know there's so many other things that contribute to anxiety and depression. I'm not downplaying that. Absolutely not. There's so many different aspects to it. But sometimes um, coming from a spiritual perspective, This is what I find when we've pushed down grief. So I am happy to deal with it when it comes up. I, in fact, know I am in tune. I know when it's important for me and I need to have a cry and I will purposely make myself have a cry by like, you know, going to my dad's grave or I have, I know this sounds really sad, but I have a shirt in my wardrobe that still smells like him and I will purposely go and smell it (laughs) um, to make myself um, feel the emotion and to go there. Because I know that that is really important. It's really important to grieve and feel the feelings when they come up. So, um, yeah, deal with the feelings when they come up if you can. People, you know, often say to me, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like when we're talking, maybe we're talking about dad and I'm explaining something that happened, you know, like towards the end. Um, or talking about, you know, a memory or something and I might get upset and have a little bit of a teary and they always say, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Like I didn't mean to make you cry. I don't want you to apologize because that's okay. I'm okay with crying. Um, and I'm crying out of love, right? I'm crying because I miss him and because I'm lucky enough to have had the amazing relationship that I did have with my dad. And because I am grateful for who he was as a person every single day. He is why I am who I am and why my life is what it is. Um, Yeah, and I am always, always grateful for that. So you can still be sad and grieving, but still be grateful for what you've had. So don't be upset if I get upset. I'm okay. (laughs) So my dad as a person, um, I can honestly say he, along with my mum, of course, were obviously one of the greatest influences or great influences that I have had in my life. He was ever supporting and proud always. Um, We even used to joke about like no matter what we did, he would be super proud. It was like we could do no wrong as kids. You know, we used to joke about and forgive me if people don't find this funny, but we used to joke about like even if we were a lady of the night, you know, um, and which absolutely no judgment to those out there that are doing that and that's your thing you know um but he would you know we would joke about that he would boast about that yes we are a lady of the night but we are the best like on our corner you know um and we would always joke about that literally no matter what we did he would be so proud of us he just was always overflow overflowing with um proudness he was our stay at home dad so um for those of you that don't know my dad was an older dad um for me and my younger sister that is i have two older siblings who are in their well one just turned 60 this year and one turned 57 And they're from my dad's first marriage. So he had them at kind of like normal age in his 30s. And then he got married again to my mum, who was 30 years younger than him, or who is 30 years younger than him, and had me and my sister. So me at 57 and my sister at 63. So he had a second lot of kids. And for us, the second lot of children, because we um, didn't grow up in the same household as my older brother and sister, because they were already out and living on their own by the time we came along. He was a stay-at-home dad for us because he was older, so mum went to work and dad was the one who was doing school pickup, um, taking us, you know, to our extracurricular activities, packing our lunches, um, that type of thing. So it was a very modern household (laughs) for the fact that, um, you know, dad was the one that, you know, even back then was the one that did all those things. He was super nurturing, you know, for a male, not saying that males aren't nurturing, but um, he was never afraid to tell us, you know, how he felt. 
And he taught us the most, you know, invaluable life lessons uh, that you could possibly imagine. You know, he was an older dad, so he was always ever present and always told us how important it was to be present in the moment um, and just to be grateful. And he was also someone who was very eccentric, like way over the top. Um, I used to actually get quite embarrassed by it when I was younger. He, um, when he was younger, used to be part of like theatrical or theatre um, what are they called? Like drama type clubs. And he even like had a stage show um, that was called Cook and Cox because his surname was Cox and the guy who he did it with uh, surname was Cook. <laughs> and, you know, they used to do skits and stuff. And the type of humour that my dad was into, like, you know, old school humour, I'm talking like um, – what are they called? The Three Stooges. He thought they were hilarious. And um, the Goons. So most of you probably haven't heard of the Goons because, you know, he's old AF or was old AF. And um, it was very like slapstick type humor. So he was just way over the top, like would burst into singing, you know, like in the middle of the shopping center. Um, was very, very loud, was actually really liked people looking at him. <laughs> Love the attention. Um extremely well-dressed, you know, at the same time, like a gentleman, I think men of that era, he was born in 1927, um, were always wearing a tie and a shirt. He's always wearing a blazer. Um, and he just loved life, like every single part of it. He never wanted to go. Um, he just loved everything. So he was a great person to be around. Um, we never missed... I, I never felt like we missed anything for him having him as an older dad because he was always um, prepared or preparing him and him and us for, you know, when he was going to pass. So he was always made sure he was at everything, like everything that every assembly I would look up, he would be there every like, um, you know, activity that you could come to, he would, he would go, uh, he would always, you know, take us to the park and he was always in the moment. He was, you know, not someone like he didn't really have a phone, I guess, till he was older anyway, but he would never be distracted. He was fully there. He would take us to places for the sake of us, you know, doing things together. Um, he was really quite fit for someone who was of his age. So at 94, he just started using a walker like um, a year and a half prior, so 18 months prior to his passing. He only just needed a walker at that time. Like he went into his 90s not even walking, using a walking stick really. Um, he had Alzheimer's but he was still really quite with it as well um, for someone of his age, like still really sharp and switched on. Um, and when he passed, he he left us a letter. So us kids, we found a letter that he had left us. Um, he was a writer as well. So an amazing writer. I share some of his writings on my Instagram if you follow him. Um, and it was something that we kind of had in common because I love reading. I love writing. I always, um, it's something that I like to do to kind of express my feelings. And it was something that we would always talk about together. And he would read things that he'd written and I'd read him things that I'd written and help him type things out. So that was like our bonding thing that we had. Um, so the letter that he left us when he passed, so me and my two older siblings and my younger sister, so the four of us were cleaning out his apartment along with my niece, so my brother's um, my brother's daughter. We have um, two different mums, by the way, in case I haven't said that. So <laughs> first lot of kids um, with his first wife and then me and my younger sister with my mum. And... Um, we, or my my um, niece was actually going through all of his books. So we were packing his room up after he passed and my niece was going through all his books because he used to also hide money in places, you know, like having Alzheimer's and he'd forget that he'd left it there. So we'd said, make sure you shake out all the books <laughs> so that we don't miss any hidden, you know, stash of money. And it was literally like, I think the first day that we were cleaning up his room and my niece literally shook out one of the books and a letter fell out. And um, I just want to share a little bit from it so you can understand a little bit more about the type of person that he was. Um, Dad was very open spiritually and in many different ways he was quite modern for someone of his age. 
Um, he was very open to all of this stuff and he always told us, so all of us siblings, that if he passed, um, if there was a way to get to us, like damn right he was going to get to us and he would, he would come through. And he's definitely followed through with that, which is what I'm going to share in a little bit more of in this episode. But this letter that us kids found, um, I'll just share with you what it said on the front and on the back. Um, because otherwise we'll be here for a while. It was like a five-page letter. But basically we found this letter uh, from him. It said on the front, do not open in bold letters until of my demise. I will be seeing you, that's for sure. I know you love me as I love you. It's been a great ride. You have been marvellous, your loving dad. And on the back um, it said, I shed my tears writing this. May God bless you and keep you safe from your loving dad. So, um, gosh, you can imagine when we found that, we were all like, oh, what the? (laughs) And we all kind of gathered around my niece and it was a really special moment. Um, You know, lots of tears, of course, but happy tears because, of course, dad thought of that, you know. Um, And she opened it and she read it to us. So it was a really special thing to have. And if you want to read the entire letter, um, I shared it on my Instagram, on my Facebook page. So at Ms. June Mac, if you don't already have me and you can go back and find it there. Um, It's probably, it's the one that you see with the, that's like a picture of a letter. (laughs) So I think you'll figure out which post it is if you want to read the entire letter because it's very, very special and um, you can kind of see you know, the type of, it really just spews out his essence or the essence of who he was. So he was, my dad was very close to all of us kids. Like we were his number one always. Um, we were very close in life. Um, so it, our relationship uh, after his after his passing uh, was also something that continued, I mean, it's also something that continues to go on and I still feel very close to him. So what got dad um, in the end was COVID. So he ended up catching COVID and at 94, you can imagine, um, no matter what the situation, the, um, the, the um, chances of getting through that are quite slim. He ended up uh, passing on a Tuesday morning, uh, uh, the 11th of January. So he actually passed away 11122. So angel numbers right there. Of course he did. So the 11th of the first 22. And we got the call around 4.45 a.m. on the Tuesday morning that he had passed about an hour earlier. So we did see him a few hours before that, but being in the COVID ward, we weren't allowed to stay for very long, which was hard. Um, But um, I feel okay with the fact that he was alone when he did actually pass, even though, of course, I would prefer to have been able to be there with him. But I'm still okay with the fact that that happened. So we went in to see him, um, me, my sister and my mum, to say our last goodbyes to his physical body. Uh, I probably got there, I said, say close to 6 a.m., And it had been a tough, long week, you know, leading up to it, obviously, with not much sleep, Um, you know, with him being unwell and my older siblings who actually live interstate coming down and being able to come say their goodbyes to him as well. And after saying goodbye, you know, to his physical body, um, I got home around 10 a.m. that morning and I went straight to sleep because, you know, pretty tired. And before I fell asleep, I could actually feel my third eye tingling. So (laughs) for those of you that are not familiar with the third eye, it's the space in between your two physical eyes and your forehead. Um, And often before a reading or when I'm doing a reading or when I'm about or when I'm meditating or connecting with my spirit guides, I feel it tingling. And sometimes it's very, very powerful. Um, If a message wants to come through, it's tingling now because I'm talking about it, obviously. (laughs) Um, and I could feel it tingling. So I knew that something was trying to come through, um, before I fell asleep, but I was like too tired. I'm like, Oh guys, I don't have time to talk to you right now. Big day, you know? Um, but as I fell asleep, it was almost instantly, um, in my dreams, 
uh, I've able to tell the difference now between the dreams that I have that are dream dreams and the dreams that are spirit guide dreams because they're very vivid dreams. And I started very vivid dreaming. And first of all, I could see um, cherry blossom, um, like vines of it everywhere. And cherry blossom are a thing that means something to me um, and my dad because where he lived, there was a really beautiful uh, cherry blossom tree out the front of his window and it was something that he loved, like he would always talk about and it was like his favourite thing about his room where he lived. And it was like these little like fairy type uh, beings spreading around this um, this cherry blossom and I saw them and then all of a sudden I saw this room and it was full of red power cords. So almost like, you know, when you have the connectors, like an extension cord and you like plug them in together and there was these red power cords hanging everywhere. And I actually heard my spirit guide say, um, and like, so there was two cords that needed to be plugged in that weren't actually plugged in. And they said, plug in these two cords and you will be able to hear him. So I grabbed the two cords, plugged them in together. And it's like in a snap, um, I literally saw dad just standing there right in front of me in his suit, um, which his blazer and his tie, like he would always wear and standing up straight. So without his walker, um, looking a little bit younger than he was when he actually passed. And he was just standing there smiling and he did a little bit of a tap dance because <laughs> as I was explaining earlier, it was quite eccentric and something that he actually also studied in was tap dancing. So <laughs> you can imagine the kind of character just by, you know, saying he was a tap dancer and he used to always tap dance in front of us and in the shops in front of people. Um, and he tap dance and he just went da 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 da, kind of like a, um, so kind of just like a little, you know, I'm here, I made it, I'm dancing again, I'm standing up straight, look at me, I'm fine, I'm okay. And I woke up like instantly and, you know, like just started bawling. And uh, so, you know, hours after he passed, he's already made his first contact. I, you know, spoke to my siblings not long after and told them about it. So, you know, they were quite happy to hear that he was okay, even though I know that they didn't doubt that. Um it was just so nice to have that. And that was kind of my first experience with him, um, you know, making contact. And some people have, you know, that I've spoken to about it, have even motioned to the fact that maybe I'm not that sad uh, because I still have the ability to be able to connect. And while I do believe that it helps to know, of course, that our loved ones are okay. Um, and of course, I feel sorry for people who don't you know, who, who think that, you know, life doesn't go on after and then it, like death is just it. I mean, that must be really hard for them um, and the grieving process to not believe that their loved ones have gone on and they're okay. I know that that helps me, um, my beliefs, but I don't think it's the case in terms of that, like <laughs> it makes it makes me miss him any less, if that makes sense. Because I still miss him as a person physically, you know, as his human self every single day. I miss like his voice. I miss um, his hugs, his phone calls, random phone calls. You know, I sometimes just go through his voice messages, his crazy stories, elaborate stories. You know, I miss his smell even. Um, and I often think about like how amazing it would be just to walk into his room again Um and be able to just go and sit next to him and just put my head on his shoulder, you know. Um, nothing can fill the void in my life that was him. And being an older dad, um, me and my younger sister, we we looked after him quite a lot. Like he was still in independent living, luckily. He didn't ever have to go to a home. But he was in like a retirement village. So it was a little – there was someone there 24-7 – um, he had his meals brought to him. They would clean his room, but he was still independent. We still took him to a lot of his appointments. You know, my sister, my younger sister was there a couple of times a week as well as me. We kind of split, you know, the chores or um, his duties between us or his care. And, you know, going from seeing him so regularly and to having those spaces, you know, in time that, uh, you know, they're not there and, we would speak every day, you know, a few times a day. So obviously, oh my gosh, sorry. Like literally this is a mess of a podcast. <laughs> sorry. 
Um, going from that, you know, to nothing, of course, there's a big void, you know, there's a big hole there. There's big blocks of time that we have to get used to that are now like, what do we do with that time? You know, you feel a little bit lost at the beginning when you lose someone that's close to you. And, um, even, you know, like little things, like I used to take him to Donut King every week. He loved going to Donut King. And I actually only could only bring myself to go there for the first time (laughs) this week. And I literally sat there with my daughter and just randomly (laughs) started tearing up because I was like, oh, this was our place, you know? And it's like a piece of my heart, you know, is constantly tugging. It's like a little tugging, you know, of that pain, that grief that's there. Um, and, uh, even though I know he's okay in spirit and I knew that at the beginning of when he first passed away as well, it was something that was hard to accept and something that I still wasn't quite ready to accept in the beginning was letting go of him in this physical world and getting used to him in spirit. Even though I knew I would be able to connect with him, it was something I wasn't ready to do right away. Obviously, that was of his choice and I was so happy to receive that dream, but right at the start, like going back to January, I wasn't ready to purposely connect because that meant that um, I had to let go of him physically and that is a hard thing to do for anybody. I was too afraid to like, you know, even meditate. I normally meditate quite a few times a week to connect with my guides um, and I was too afraid to do that because I knew he would be there. (laughs) I was too afraid to shift my perception to the spirit world. I literally didn't do anything spiritual, which I love doing, um, for a while because I knew without a doubt he would be there. So it took me until after the funeral or his funeral before I kind of felt ready. And when I felt ready for it, look, you know, I sat down in my bedroom and I sat down with a whole heap of tissues because I knew it was going to be emotional And I closed my eyes and shifted my perception to the spirit world. And of course, he was there straight away. Um, He looked different in my dream. He looked young, like probably when I say young, (laughs) for me, dad young was probably around in his 50s. So when I was like a little kid um, and he had black hair, he just looked, he looked totally different because his hair was grey, obviously, when he passed to, to how I was used to him. And... I I could feel he was just happy and so excited to connect and I started to write because one of my favorite ways to connect with the spirit world is is writing down things I get to capture it I get to look at them the notes later because often I forget what has come through um and we almost like had a little conversation so you know dad kind of explained what happened to him um at the time of his passing Um, And the way that I get my messages from the spirit world, I see them, I see him not with my human eyes, but in my mind's eye or my third eye. So if you haven't listened to the previous episode, it explains a bit better about psychic senses. So episode five, if you haven't listened to it, go back. It helps. And I hear them um, in my own mind, in my own voice, but I I capture it, I write it down. And he started uh, to explain that at the time of his passing, he kind of did a a bit of a life review and was happy with what it is that he had achieved and I he kind of showed that he went and looked over all of us kids um as a, you know a spirit like in between worlds when he was passing over and knew that we were going to be okay and even though he didn't want to leave us I know he never wanted to leave us um he knew we would be all right and if he had continued to live and got better, it was like he did a little flash forward in his life. So he kind of indicated that he looked ahead in time and saw that if he were to stay, you know, after this illness that he, cause he was, you know, 94, he would have just continued to decline in his capabilities and the bird, like not the burden, cause he was never a burden, but the responsibility of his care would be a lot for, you know, me and my family to handle. And he didn't want that. Like he always wanted to be independent and he just felt it was the right time to go. So um, I was able, he kind of showed me how, you know, all his loved ones came and got him. It was like the hospital room that he was in like opened up and they were all there. Like I could see his mum, I could see um, his brother, 
his um, uncle, who he was very close to, his stepdad, all his friends, you know, and family came in to grab him. So it was really nice to be able to see that or to see what he experienced. Um, And as I was writing out, you know, these messages um, at the bottom of the page, like if I go back and look at my automatic writing, he signed it in a way that he used to, or I wrote down, how he used to sign all his letters to us. So he would always write, um, you know, from your loving dad and Mickey, <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> so Mickey was our um, our dog growing up and him and my dad were very, very close. He was one of those dogs that, you know, dad never wanted to get and then when we got him it became his dog and he was obsessed. And I totally forgot about that. That's how he used to sign our letters. And, um, yeah, if I look back at that automatic writing from kind of like my first connection with him, <laughs> That's how it signed at the bottom. And I instantly got an image of him with our dog. Um, So I knew that they, well, I know that they are together. And actually my dad was buried with um, that dog's with Mickey's ashes. So it's very fitting because we never knew what to do with with Mickey after he passed and my sister held on to his ashes. But then when dad died, she knew exactly what to do and um, he went with dad. So um. That is kind of the first experience that I had um, with him just after he passed. But I sort of got back into, um, I didn't go back to work, but not long after dad passed, I got back into, you know, my spiritual development and I went back into a mediumship circle, like almost straight away. (laughs) And the person or my mentor who was running the mediumship circle said, you know, are you sure? Because there's a lot of mediums in this group, you know, like who we practice on each other and your dad's going to come through. And are you okay with that? Because it's still very fresh. I was okay with that. Um, You know, I was ready for that. I was actually happy for that. I never get tired of hearing messages from him. For me, it's really comforting. Um, And when practicing in mediumship circle, um, so practicing my um, abilities on other mediums that are in there, I would feel him. So I'd feel dad come in and I still do every time I do my work, every time I do a reading on my right side, standing behind me with his hands on my shoulder. And, um, I just know that he's there helping me with my work Um, and I 100% believe that dad helps make my work more potent. He helps me from the other side and I just know it because this is something that he was so into in life and he was the ever supporting, you know, father. I know he is here and helping me with my work moving forward. I can feel him behind me, you know, like right now Um, and I, I do feel extra powerful knowing that he is helping me. Um, it feels, you know, like he was someone who had, you know, there are other people who had gifts in his family. So um, there was other mediums in his family, other psychics. My dad had many experiences in as himself, like he'd seen his grandparents when they passed over, like sitting on the end of his bed. He was the kind of person who went to readings. He would go and get readings on his own. Um And I used to take him to like, you know, psychic expos with me and he'd stand there quite happily while I went and got readings, looking at the crystals and like he loved, you know, stones and stuff. He was like the best. But in mediumship circle, he was always the first to come through. And one of the first things that came through in when someone was reading me or another psychic was another medium was reading me was that um, I can see your dad behind you. standing to the right side of you with his hand on your shoulder. And it was exactly, they explained exactly what I had felt. And even though, you know, part of your spiritual development, if you're learning to be a psychic or a a medium is not to doubt yourself when it comes to yourself, you always do, right? So it was just really nice to have that confirmation from somebody else that yes, he is behind me. It is exactly how I felt and saw him. Um, It was just really nice to have that conversation uh, and confirmation. Um, And whenever he would come through in mediumship circle, it was always, there's a man here and he's in a suit. Like there's a man here in a blazer, like, (laughs) you know, like what's he doing? And dad would never go out anywhere without his tie um, and his shirt. And even like if we were taking him to a trip to KFC, for example, he always had his blazer on like (laughs) Bunnings, KFC, wherever we were going, he was always dressed nicely. So I think it's really um, just such a huge confirmation (laughs) to hear that he's still got his suit on. And it's something that he wants people to know about him, you know, like they, that he's still well-dressed, you know, even in spirit. And so many messages every week in Mediumship Circle, um, like I'm talking, people coming up with 
um, details from his funeral and him like talking about, you know, my eulogy, like people that didn't even know how recent it was that he passed, people that weren't even in the same state. Obviously, like I don't need to prove anything to me. I believe in this stuff, right? But if you're looking for proof, go to Mediumship Circle. This is where you'll find (laughs) the proof of life after death. No way they could have known these tiny, tiny details. Even childhood memories that I had forgotten, you know, were brought up in Mediumship Circle. And I am... I got to experience, um, you know, the love of my dad um, from multiple different points of view, from different mediums, and I am so grateful for that all the time. So I would like to say thank you to all the other mediums in that group if anyone's listening. Um, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, He visits in my dreams regularly, so continuing on, um, and like sometimes it's like every night of the week he will come into a dream, and sometimes it's only every other week, sometimes it's more times than others, but sometimes in the dreams like I'm just able to hug him. Like I've literally had a dream where um, he was just standing there and I could put my arms around him and I could just hug him and cry, and it felt really nice just to be able to hug him, and it's like, you know, something that I needed. Um, I've even had situations where he's like warned me about life things that were coming up, um, you know, to do with legal avenues because like we're dealing with his, you know, estate right now. Um, and there's been some legal things that we've had to deal with and he's kind of come up in dreams and warned me about those things that are coming up. Um, I've even like one of my most crazy experiences that I've had was, um, I had a dream that I was, back working I used to work in retail and I was I used to work in surf shops and then I was back working in this surf shop and um the phone rang and I picked up the phone and I literally heard dad's voice like I heard him say hello on the other end and I was like you know it felt real and I got goosebumps like all over my body and I was like oh my gosh like how is this happening because I didn't realize I was dreaming like how I could hear his voice it was so nice to hear his voice again um And I said, I was like, oh my gosh. And he was like, I'm sorry I left, you know, still saying sorry I left. It was health issues. Um, And it was kind of crackling in and out, like, you know, how a phone would crackle um, his voice. And I knew that this was taking him a lot of energy to get this message across. And I said, and I didn't, I was like, I know dad, like, it's okay. You had to go, like you had to go at some point, right? You were 94. Um, You know, like, are you okay? Are you happy? And I just heard him answer yes. And I said, you know, do you like heaven? (laughs) And he said, yes. Um, And then he was still concerned, like with how he was kind of like started to speak, like, how is everybody and the girls? And, and then it was crackling in and out and um, his voice was lost. And I just, I woke up at this point. And uh, when I get clear audience messages, so psychic sense of hearing, um, my right ear like rings or makes like a whooshing sound And I've never felt it so loud in my right ear and I knew he was still there. Um, And the whole right side of my face was hot and I could just feel that he was still trying to talk to me and I was trying so hard to hear him like I could hear his voice in that dream. Um, But it's like I just couldn't quite get there to the right vibration. I could feel like my vibe like going up and down. I could feel the ear frequency. Sounds really weird but like trying to adjust and I was just talking to him you know I said stop worrying about us we know you had to go you had to go at some point and we are we are content or at peace with the fact that you know you left and I know you're still there and I just want you to be happy basically so I just kind of had a little conversation with him but it really was um an amazing experience and I don't want these experiences to stop Anytime I need him, you know, I can call on him. And of course, the relationship is different um, to before he passed. Um, But sometimes your relationship with someone in spirit can be better than what it was in real life. Um, My Nana Betsy, so my dad's mum, I never knew her properly in life because um, she passed away when I was in my teens and she lived overseas in England and I only met her twice. But in spirit, uh, I know her better than I did in in life and she's always there as well like if I shift my perception they are together now you know so um in every reading she's always there before prior to dad passing now it's always dad you know taking over I've had a reading with a psychic recently and um she even said to me she's like your dad is not going to leave you alone (laughs) and um I am so okay with that um like my friends have dreamt about him or connected with him and I'm talking like friends that aren't even into the spiritual stuff 
Um, they've, you know, passed on messages and just he's so persistent. <laughs> my siblings have continued to, you know, have dreams. And my younger sister, she um, is very intuitive as well. She's not, um, you know, like she wouldn't practice the spiritual stuff. She's also very analytical minded. Um, she's a doctor. So like a vet doctor, an animal doctor. And um, she's had multiple dreams. You know, usually it happens around the same time. Like we'll both kind of get a lot of vivid dreams around similar times. Like when we check in with each other, we're like, hey, you've been dreaming about dad a lot this week. Yeah, he's been visiting me too. And my sister's even had dreams like where every night he's come into her dreams, like literally parading around with one of his friends who have passed over. So he had all these close friends that, you know, passed um, prior to him. Uh, because, you know, he just kept going. And every night it was like him and one of these friends, like in something elaborate, like a fire truck, like parading past and waving, like, you know, look, I'm here, but look, I've got, you know, my old friend, Bill, my old best friend from this time. And then like the next night, it was literally like another friend, look, I'm here. And I'm I'm with my other friend, you know, um, Adrian, and we're parading around. So, um, I have no doubt that it's a relationship that's going to continue to develop. And when I need help from him, you know, when I'm doing readings, I'm always like, hey, dad, can you turn up the volume on this, you know, passed over spirit? I'm finding it hard to understand what they're saying. And I do believe um, that he's helping and how you can connect to. So things that you can try, if there's someone that you are desperate to contact on the other side, just talk to them. Number one, you can speak to them. They can hear you. I 100% believe that they hear everything that you say. Um, You can try automatic writing, right? So if you want to try and meditate or write them a letter, do it. And I believe that they know what it is that you're writing um, and they can understand. And maybe even if you're lucky enough, you might feel like you are getting messages back. But the thing is, when you're writing it down, it's going to feel like you. It's going to feel like you getting the messages getting the messages back. But I have no doubt with the intention of connecting, you are connecting. Um, it's just up to you as to whether you can get out your own way and believe that what you're writing down is real, like it's actually happening. Um, so you can try it. They will be there. I promise you. Um, you can ask them to visit you in your dreams because this is often how passed over spirits will get to you, uh, because you're high vibe in this time in your sleep state, you're in the theater or deeper than the theater state, um, usually, but, um, your high frequency, so they can get to you. Your analytical mind is asleep, so they can get to you with any types of messages. If they haven't visited you already or you're like, well, this has never happened to me before, sometimes it's because they don't visit if you're not ready. If they know it's going to possibly hinder that your grieving process, they're not going to. If they know you're not ready for it, they won't because they want the best for you. Sometimes they have a little trouble, but just opening up that communication and saying, I'm ready, like I want you to visit me, That can help. Um, And I know a lot of other people that it, you know, they've just set that intention and then it's happened. But just know that they are always there. You know, you can meditate with the intention of connecting with them, or you can even try something called the soul room. And the soul room is basically where, you know, you'll close your eyes. And there's lots of different versions of this. But um, look, I've, I've shared it with a lot of my clients and they've had great success where you might get yourself into a little bit of a deeper state of meditation first, or you might just go straight there, sit quietly, close your eyes and imagine yourself um, going to this room. It might be a room from your childhood. It might be a safe room and there's a couch in there. And when you open the door, there's going to be someone sitting on the couch there that you are looking to connect with who's from the other side. And, you know, you close the door behind you and you can come and sit next to them. You can sit across from them. You can hug them, whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing. And you can talk to them. You can tell them anything that you need to get off your chest Um, and feel, you know, the love that they have to give back because usually that's just their main message. Sometimes they have a little bit of trouble communicating back, um, especially if they're a newer spirit or maybe they weren't into this stuff, you know, when they were alive, but just know that they are there and that they hear anything that you want to say. Um, Know, I guess, that when you think about them, that they are there. If you feel them close, don't doubt it, talk to them, know that they are there. They can be simultaneously in heaven, but with you at the same time and also watching over your sister and watching over your brother. Um, They have no human limitations like we, we do. We're in one spot at one particular time they are everywhere. Um, 
the communication is just different now. Like you might get communication from them in sign with signs. There might be like, you know, you might see butterflies and you think of, you know, your grandmother. Or with my dad, I see pig- pigeons and they're like my sign from him. It's just that sense of knowing. Don't doubt yourself. You know, when you see a butterfly and it's turned up when you've thought about them, that is them. Believe that it's true. They see everything and they are with you through all of these, you know, tough times and just know that they see everything, but it's without judgment. You know, all that falls away when they're in spirit. When you have a good day as well, know that grief doesn't equal love. Your grief doesn't equal how much you love them. Um, It's okay to have good and happy days, even though you are grieving. Tell your loved ones who are still with us in the physical realm that you love them. You know, don't leave with any regrets. But also, if you didn't get a chance to tell someone who's passed um, how much you love them or you have guilt because of a situation, maybe you haven't had an argument just before you passed, maybe you didn't get a chance to say goodbye, just know that this is never what they want for you, what they want for you. They never want you to have grief. They never want you to feel bad. And your intention now of, um, you know, feeling bad that you didn't get to say it. They know that. They feel that. They forgive you. This is nothing to them. Like they know, they don't doubt how much you love them. They don't doubt um, any of that. So if you're feeling guilty, please let that go because often when, I, um, you know, I do connect with loved ones from the other side, it's one of the first things that they want to say is don't feel bad for like, you know, this situation or this argument we had before we passed or that you didn't get to see me in the hospital, that you weren't didn't make it for when I passed. Don't feel guilty. They just want you to move on. They forgive. They're okay with it. Anyway, I hope that this episode has helped. I thank you so much for letting me share my story um, about my continuing relationship with my dad. I know that he will continue to be there for us always, just like your loved ones are there for you as well now. They are always trying to send you healing. If you're going through a tough time, know that they're sending you healing and that they are always sending you love. Um, Thank you so much again. And um, have a really amazing rest of your day or night. Thanks heaps, guys. Bye. I'm June Mack, and I wanted to thank you for tuning in to the Fully Woo podcast. I can't tell you how grateful I am to have had you here. You can find me over at junemack.com or on all social media as Ms. June Mack. If you enjoyed today's episode, it would mean so much if you could please subscribe, rate, review, and share. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a privilege to be in your ears.